Hey everybody, how's it going? It's me, Sam, back with another wonderful Sam Tries to Learn, I mean Teach, how to do something today, Battle Armor. And with me is my wonderful co-host, Jesty. Jesty, why don't you go ahead and say hello? Hey everybody. So one thing I do want to make a note, and I'll make sure that this is in the comments, there already is an existing Battle Armor video. In fact, why don't I spend the time bringing that up right now so I can show that. All right, everybody, thank you for your patience. Uh, hopefully that only takes about two seconds. Here is YouTube, and so I did a search for Battle Armor Mega Mech, and one of the options that came up is Elemental Combat Training from Strategos Level 3. He does a great video. I highly recommend it. This is meant to be somewhat complimentary. Some of the stuff is going to be exactly the same, but he goes into a lot more detail. Mine is more just going to be kind of quick and dirty. But anyways, let's get back to what we're going to do. So let me bring up my trusty list. All right, first thing up, we're going to select units in the lobby. Now, Jesty's already gone ahead and select his units, and now I'm going to go ahead and select mine. So first, let's get some battle armor. So right now, I have game year 30, 30, 100 experimental. So everything that's possible could be there. Made sure everything's highlighted. I'm going to go unit type and switch to battle armor. I'm going to keep weight class all. And I'm just going to do standard elementals. So we've got elemental battle armor right here. I'm going to throw a laser. Let's get that. Flamer is my favorite. Let's grab that. And just for fun, I'm going to add a machine gun. All right. So I'm just doing regular standard clan elemental battle armor. There's so many other options. You know what? I'm going to throw in there a space one because I like the space. So I'm going to do the space micro pulse. So I've got four. Okay. Now what I need is I need some battle taxis. So I need stuff to bring my elementals in because they just did a great video on the Dasher P. I'm going to select that for one of my battle taxis. I want to show a vehicle. So I should go and search tank. Uh, Jesty, what's a good tank to be a battle taxi? The Epona? Is that a good one? Yeah, the Epona is a pretty good uh, hover tank. It's got some decent speed on there, so you can deliver your elementals uh, awesome. safely. I'm going to do that, and then just to mess with Jesty, I'm going to have an extra fun mobile long tom artillery that I'm going to throw out there that he doesn't realize is coming. Now... I'm going to go ahead and deploy this bad boy off board deployment. So that way he can't shoot it. But I'm going to give him some rounds to not worry about me shooting at it. Yeah, I'll deploy it to the north so it's coming. That, that'll be a fun extra thing. I'm also going to really cheat and make sure I don't miss by that much. Put gunnery down to zero. So, okay, we've got our units in play. Let's go ahead and give them a nice little scheme. Um, individual camo. Uh, let's go with a nice clan. You've got blue. I'll go with a nice red that'll really kind of stand out. Go delta. No idea which clan that is. Ooh, fancy. Okay, so now choosing their skills. Okay, so I have my elementals. They start off default 3-5. And click configure, go to pilot. And it's three gunnery, anti-mech five, which for other systems, especially BV out on the master unit list, will not be anti-mech, but will be piloting. It's the same thing for when it comes down to battle armor. I'm going to keep this guy at three five. I'll switch this one to three four to show a little bit of difference. And that's about it for skills. Now I'm going to keep the others at three five. One note on the elemental battle armor space. The only real difference between a space battle armor and a regular battle armor is the space one does not come with a missile launcher. Where view? That's what I'm looking for. So standard, pretty much everything else, battle armor except no SRMs. Therefore, it's a lower cost, BV wise. All right, so these guys, I'm gonna go ahead and mount. So right down here, again, I'm right clicking to get that pop up. I'm gonna put this one on the dasher. I'm gonna put the flamer onto the opponent. Now, I'm actually gonna go ahead and undo that. Upload, unload, 
thought that said helpful and I was like what and I'm going to show you that just what we just did here mounting them in the lobby I can also choose to mount them in the deployment phase all right so I've got them mounted on an Omni Mac I showed how you could mount it on the Epona but I didn't do that and now I'm ready to start Jesse and I have chosen our sides we've selected a map with some terrain so let's go ahead and get into it all right, so here we are in the deployment phase. Now I can deploy my elementals any which way that I want. Now remember, I talked about mounting them. So right now, unload, that's because they're mounted. If I click on the Epona, I can now select load. So now before I place my vehicle, I can choose to put an elemental on there. So we'll go ahead and put the flamer on there. Okay, and so now as I'm deploying that vehicle, which nice hover tank, right here and we're going to turn our facing. We're going to do some fun stuff with the upper tank. So now that I've got the elementals loaded, I've got a little bit of a T right here. If I didn't have them on there, there would be a different symbol right there next to the name. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and deploy. Now we wait on Jesty to do his stuff. There we go. Okay, one note here, remember the long time, and I selected for it not to come until round four. It's got a nice little four right there. All right, so we've got the dasher P. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sh put that, put that right here. Oops, that was not what I meant to do. I'll go ahead, and, yeah, I'll just deploy these guys first. So I'm gonna deploy the laser first, hit deploy. So I'm gonna go ahead and now actually select the dasher P, which I thought I had. Go ahead and deploy that again that right there all right and again it's got the T which means that it has um, the battle armor already mounted go ahead and click deploy if I hover over it it just gives me the dasher it doesn't show me that it has them mounted so the key there is the fact that the T is on it if you look over here on yeah Jesse, for example go ahead yeah I was just about to say uh, I've got the T on my dragonfly and I don't have the T on my mana war because I decided to not mount my kobold two C's down at the bottom I'm gonna jump my arctic cheetah and chump dump my battle armor here you can see right here on my screen the viper has the T the man of war doesn't so there's no battle armor mounted on the man of war but it is on the viper and then before he moved you could have seen that the cheetah had the T. Now it doesn't, but you can see that the battle armor is directly there. All right, I'm going to try and preserve this battle armor, so I'm going to jump them up here. Once again, the battle armor had dismounted. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the first kind of movement to try and initiate battle armor combat. I'm going to go right after the dragonfly. So go ahead and move there. All right, the dasher. The dasher can go any which way it wants. All right, so great opportunity right here. I can plop my dasher right here. Let's turn him around and unload. Where's my unload? More unload. I've now got my dasher and I got a little unload sign. Make sure you hit unload before you hit move um, because if you don't do that, you won't be able to dismount the battle armor until the next turn so do your movement first as in select where you want them to go like i have here then click unload remember it's on the second menu so here we are on the first menu click more and there's unload now i'll go ahead and do that so i'm going to drop the battle armor right into the rear of the arctic cheetah man that arctic cheetah is in trouble now one thing to note uh the capold battle armor 2c is actually a VTOL set of battle armor. So they function a little differently. I can float around with these Kobold 2Cs. I can't enter forest Texas with them while they're using VTOL movement, but I can walk into a forest using ground movement. Wow. So they're a lot like sliffs, sylphs? Yeah, they, they're exactly like sylphs. So I'll go ahead and move these uh, Kobold 2Cs. As you can see here, they are at elevation two because I had to fly over that forest to get here. So. Gotcha. Yeah, I do have VTOL movement on these battle armor. And one thing that to note, which we'll go ahead and do some science with later on, is uh, that you have to land the battle armor on the ground for a turn before you can do a leg attack with them, which is something we'll get into later. Cool. Did not know that. All right, so my hover tank also cannot enter forests, but I'm going to go ahead and move up to these guys. Hopefully I don't skid. That's going to be interesting. And unload. Ah, you know what? We'll go here. So I don't have to risk a skidding. One, two, that won't work. We'll go here. All right, so I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna unload, move. All right, 
I, because of line of sight, cannot see the battle armor, I'm guessing. Which battle armor? Or uh, which with, with which unit? So I'm now looking at my elementals up at the top of the screen, and there's a red X over at least one of your units. I'm trying to figure it out. Line of sight. Yeah, it's, it's the salamanders. You can't see them. Yep. So even though they're not behind cover because I am behind cover I can't see my opponent to shoot at them now I should be able to see that viper though so if I switch to what I'm targeting nope I also can't see no that's right okay so I'm hidden from them they're hidden from me I can't see the viper or the elementals so basically yeah. I have nothing I can shoot at there I could shoot yeah. the SRMs but again because of cover my cover I can't see anything so I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. Yeah, line of sight is always mutual. I should know that. Let me write that one down. Where's that SpongeBob meme? Write that down. Okay, so the battle armor that I jumped directly into the whole fray can do stuff. So I have the SRM, two, it's a two shot, so two of two. And then that's each elemental has two SRMs, ends up being five elementals, 10 SRMs. All right, let's target. So I've got the elemental in the same hex as me. Is that what I'm pointing at? Yep, range zero. So I could shoot my missiles at the guys in the same hex as me. I could shoot the machine gun at the same. And yeah, don't forget your auto rifle. And I can shoot my auto rifle. And because I'm in infantry range, I get a minus two to hit. And again, uh, there's different damage and heat depending on range and uh, units left. What I want to do though, is I want to do, look at swarm. Because target, I don't, I can't swarm other battle armor. That's my one disappointment. I think battle armor should be able to do physical attacks against battle armor. So I have the swarm attack. Okay, so I've got Jesse right here in the hex with me. Jesse did all this stuff to create a massive TMM and it doesn't matter. The swarm attack is my anti-mech skill, the piloting skill of five plus two because I have five troopers active. The less troopers you have active, the greater this modifier becomes. So I have a seven to hit on swarm, but I'm not a big fan of swarming because I'll swarm this turn and it'll do nothing other than maybe successfully swarm. It'll be next turn that I actually can do damage. And there's a lot of ways to deal with swarmed units when you have a mech. What I do love is I love the leg attack. So now again, I've got the dragonfly. Now I have a two hit of five because it's an anti-mech skill plus a zero modifier for having five troops. So I'm gonna go ahead, now that I've selected leg attack, I'm gonna select fire. Now it comes back and is like, okay, well, since you have other attacks, what do you want to do with those attacks except already firing a weapon that can only be fired by itself leg attack so there's no other attacks that i can do i can't do the srm i can't do the machine gun i can't do the auto rifle can't swarm and i can't attack swarm because i'm not doing that or stop the swarm attack so i'm gonna go ahead and hit done so now i've got my leg attack on his viper you jerk i know i'm a horrible person yeah jesse had a TMM of four, because he jumped eight. All right, so now I've got the dasher. I want this, eh, who cares? I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot up his Arctic Cheetah. Got all these nice micro pulse lasers. I know I'm gonna die because I'm a dasher and I didn't create that good of a TMM, so I'm just going all out. Man, that thing's heat neutral. Yeah, it's no joke. Okay, so my Ipoma has stuff in the turret, but I can't see anything, so it doesn't matter. Uh, real quick, okay, I think this is my last unit. Notice the two elementals that I deployed that were mounted and I dismounted this turn, so the one that the Poma dismounted and the one that the Dasher dismounted, those don't get attacks this turn. So even though I put them in the perfect spot to shoot the cheetah in the back, doesn't matter because I don't get to actually do an attack this turn. See, I keep hitting next unit, nothing changes. That's because they won't do anything. All right, let's see what happened. So weapons fire, that's Jesty shooting at me. Okay, elementals, they get hit one per weapon attack. So it randomly rolls, trooper three was the one that took the damage, takes seven damage. These elementals have 10 armor, so there's three remaining. Shot at, so you missed. Okay, leg attack. He did a five, leg on a five. Rolls three, misses. The computer must have thought it was Jesty doing the leg attack. Jesty always misses on fives. 
Yep. My Dasher went to town on the Arctic Cheetah. We don't really care about that because we're only here to talk about battle armor. The Kobold did some shooting. He's got a machine gun light hitting their troopers again, taking damage, and it randomly chooses which trooper gets damage. Yeah, so one thing to note is when battle armor fires, uh, they roll on the cluster table for however many units are in the squad. Uh, we have all squad five battle armor, so it's going to roll on the five cluster table, which is why three of my troopers hit, even though all five of them fired this turn. Thank you. Good point. I should have added that to the list. So yeah, it says machine gun, but technically every single one of these units has five of whatever their primary weapon is. Physical attacks. Okay, so my dasher has the physical attack option. I have to click on what I want to target. So I can target the salamander battle armor or the cheetah. If I'm going for the cheetah, I've got the option to kick the cheetah. I've got a two hit of six. Base two, plus I walk, plus their target modifier, target jumped, or I can choose to kick the salamander. Now my option goes up a lot better because um, they only walked because they were, I'm sorry, they don't get any target modifiers because they were just deployed. They just dismounted. So the only modifiers I get is the fact that it's battle armor target and they walked. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the easier hit on the salamander. Yeah, so battle armor inherently have a plus one to hit, to shoot at, I should say. So I managed to land a kick, but it only hits one trooper and that trooper takes four damage because as great as the, as the dasher is, it's not really laying out any physical damage. No, nah, but you can force a PSR on a mech if you connect. That's true. I could have gone for the to your mech. That would have been the better overall option, but less for this training. Okay, so moving on. Done. Got the heat phase. One thing to note, battle armor, no heat. Yeah, battle armor and vehicles generally don't track heat. Gonna move right here. Oops, gonna try and remember what button I'm supposed to click. Move right here. I can't mount can't do load anything like that but i'm still gonna move there okay hopefully jesse's kind enough not to kill my pursuit tank and my battle armor that are sitting there are you kidding that's juicy targets right there you can kill them next turn all right now i've got my battle armor right here that now the tank is in the same spot so i want to put that battle armor into the tank oh hey one thing you can show is the uh the stacking limit in every hex, you can have up to four units, max, two for each player, or two for two different players, I should say. I bet if you tried to jump your flamer elementals into that hex with your elementals and your Epona, it won't let you. Very good point. So you see right here, mount is grayed out. That's because in order to mount battle armor onto something during the movement phase, the battle armor must start the phase in the same hex. So next turn, it doesn't kill my tank you'll see the mount option being available. I'm gonna hit done for right now. And then I'll demonstrate by trying to put the flamer into the hex after Jesty gets done to show that that will exceed the limit. So I'm gonna go ahead, go jump, go there. The three is grayed out because it won't let me actually get there. Now it'll still let me think I can do that and it'll let me hit move and I'm gonna hit move and it's gonna put me one hex short. And that's because it would have exceeded that limit. But I don't get any message telling me that. So I'm sitting there going, man, Mega Mac is all jacked up. What's wrong with Mega Mac? Let me go yell at the developers who put together this wonderful program for free and they don't charge me anything and they do all this work. Oh wait, no, it's Mega Mac's doing everything right. I'm the one who messed up by not reading the rules. I will demonstrate that Mag battle armor can actually get remounted by going to this battle armor. So I've got my micro pulse laser battle armor. Ooh, it's telling me I can't mount. Why is it telling me I can't mount? Oh, I know why. Because I need to mount by the dasher. Dasher is going to load. So now it's picked up the battle armor. So it's the carrier that makes that move and now i'm gonna get these guys away because i'm really scared about this vtol battle armor coming towards me i'm gonna run here now yes you're my mighty machine gun <laughs> now that i've mounted them i can't unload them at the end of my movement i'll have to wait until next turn so they'll stay mounted through this turn dasher now has the t all right next unit do i have a... so this is my last elemental to move now, what's unfortunate is 
his two mechs nearby haven't done their movement yet. So whatever I do, they're, I can't attack either mech because you know one would assume neither one is immobile. They'll move their mech to a point where I can't do a physical attack. I can't swarm, I can't leg attack. So I'm gonna go demonstrate battle armor on battle armor violence. I'm gonna go right into the same hex as Salamander. Okay, so let's... Um, because we're here for science, I'm gonna go ahead and walk into your elementals so we can actually maybe see what a leg attack does this time. <laughs> Fair enough. Because uh, the one thing I wanted to talk about was battle armor on battle armor violence, I'm gonna start off with my machine gun guy. All right, because I'm not doing a leg attack or anything like that, I'm gonna start with my weapons. I'm gonna shoot with my SRMs first. So right now it's pre-programmed to target the Viper because that's what I shot at last time. I'm gonna switch that Salamander. Quick note, I've got three gunnery skill. That's the gunnery that my battle armor started off with, plus the target movement. So he moved three to four hexes, so he's got plus one and jumped plus one. Now I jumped as well, but you notice there's no modifier for my jump. That's because battle armor does not incur a unit movement penalty to its targeting, which is actually great for when you're spotting for indirect fire, which had I thought to bring LRMs, I could have demonstrated, but don't worry, I'll put an addendum on to the end of this video where suddenly magically I add in some LRM units. So anyways, or who knows, maybe we'll splice it into the middle of this. Ooh. That's extra spicy. So let's go ahead and start chewing up some of his salamander. Let's go ahead and fire. Now, because I'm doing regular weapon attacks and not the physical attacks, I can also shoot my machine gun and my auto rifle. I can't swarm this particular because Defender is not a mech or vehicle. Can't attack swarm because I haven't already successfully swarmed. I can't stop swarming because again, I haven't successfully swarmed and I can't do a leg attack because again, the defender is not a mech. Even if the defender was a mech, those options wouldn't be available because I did the weapons attacks, which therefore prevent me from doing physical attacks. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and select the dasher for a minute. I'm not actually gonna do anything because I wanna keep his Arctic Cheeto alive, but hopefully his Arctic Cheeto will do some nice damage to my dasher so we can show how battle armor can be used as additional armor for a unit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit done and hopefully Jesty will uh, target me with his Arctic Cheetah and hopefully land a hit or two. Hopefully. That's the plan. Fingers crossed. Ooh, I'm looking good though. Need 11. Quit running around so fast. I'm going to have to wait till next turn to show what that looks like. <laughs> Alright, next turn I'll stay still. I want the battle armor that Jesty was kind enough to put his Viper in. First off, I'm just going to demonstrate. All right, so here's the Viper. I've got my weapons. I'm going to go ahead and hit fire, fire, and fire. All right, swarm mech. Now I am in a place where I could do attack. Swarm attack must be units only attack, and there must not be multiple swarm attacks. So I can't do the swarm attack because I've already chosen to do weapons attacks. And again, I can't attack the swarm mech because I haven't swarmed them yet. I can't stop because again, I haven't swarmed and I can't do a leg attack. So we're going to try for a successful leg attack. Now I've got Jesty targeted. This is my better anti-mech with the forks. Remember, I pushed that one up, so hopefully I'm more lucky this time. I'm gonna go ahead and fire so we can see what a leg attack does. Now, what am I gonna do here? I wanna show some more damage on the Viper. I'm gonna really try and kill his Viper. I've got my SRM too. I'm gonna go ahead and fire that. I've got my small laser. I'm going to shoot that. And my auto rifle, shoot that. And again, right now I have five active pieces of battle armor so each one is going to shoot two missiles one small laser and one auto rifle so you see a lot of you know the armor the battle armor shot and then we'll hit with x missiles and y lasers and z auto rifles got my nice little tank so my tank is in the same hex as one of jesty's battle armors so let's go ahead and look at that battle armor range zero automatic failure. Only infantry weapons shoot at zero range. My medium pulse lasers and my streak SRM sec, uh, 4 are not going to hit. Could choose to go after the Viper or whatnot, but kind of want the Viper to be alive next turn, so we'll hold off on that. Okay, so my Ow. elemental machine gun. 
fired the SRM-2 at the Salamander. I needed five. I hit. Six missiles hit. Now that's out of ten. So I missed with four. And then two damage to Trooper 3. Two damage to Trooper 4. So right here, Salamander takes two damage to Trooper 4, goes down to five armor. And then again, a little bit further down, another two damage to Trooper 4. Now it's down to three armor. I missed with the machine gun. I did hit with the auto rifle. Two troopers hit out of five. Cumulative caused one damage to Trooper 5. Yeah, the auto rifles don't do a lot of damage, but one damage is all you really need if you're already internal to start rolling for crits. So it, it adds up over time. It does? Yeah. Yeah, one thing to note, the auto rifles would all hit one location. Uh, so instead of clustering like the missiles did, uh, and hitting multiple troopers, they would all hit one location if he rolled higher and got three or four troopers to hit, and it did more damage. And you can see that in what you shot at me with your flamers shooting at my laser. You got four troopers to hit, which caused two damage, and therefore I took all two damage to one trooper. Exactly. The elemental with the flamer is really good because you'd be doing two heat or two heat and two damage if you were attacking a mech because you're just attacking a battle armor it's just going to be the two damage oh that's an optional rule uh for flamers to do heat and damage i don't think we have it turned on because it it would have done four damage uh because it does x if we if the unit does not track heat that heat translates to damage ah great see this is why i make sure to have a co-host somebody who's always smarter than me he also shot the srms at the opponent out of the 10 missiles he fired, only three hit. Cluster table does not like you. Again, damage gets spread out as per normal. Yeah, um, one thing to note is that uh, as you lose troopers, which none of us have lost yet, you lose damage. So you want to get those one-shot SRMs while you've still got your full squad five out whenever possible. The Arctic Cheetah did manage to hit the Fire Moth with the Pulse Laser. Uh, hit perfectly on the right torso, even though it was shot from the left side. That, that was a nice little curve you put on your Pulse Laser. Now the Fire Moth takes three damage to the right torso. The Passenger, the Battle Armor, avoids the damage. Kind of the opposite of what I was trying to show. I was trying to show that the battle armor could soak up damage. In this case, the battle armor, you missed the battle armor, so therefore the fire moth took all of the damage and has only one armor remaining. Okay, leg attack right here. So leg attack at Dragonfly Viper needs four, hits seven using kick table. Right leg takes four damage, so not that much damage. However, it's an automatic roll on the critical hit table. Unfortunately, I rolled a five, so I got no effect. It's less the yeah, damage. One... Go ahead, Jesse. No, I was going to say, one thing to note is that you can only hit the legs with a leg attack. I mean, it's in the name. And even if the mech is prone, I'm pretty sure that the leg attack will still only hit the legs because it won't hit the full body table because they're prone. It's not about the height. It's about the type of attack. Basically, they're like putting satchel charges into the actuators and stuff and trying to rip out my armor from the legs. And another thing to note is you can do a leg attack and roll a 12 on the you know attack roll and generate a critical hit chance and also get the critical hit that comes naturally from connecting with the leg attack Ooh, nice so, you get so double there, rolls yeah there is a chance to do a through armor crit with a leg attack so you can get the double up on the crit chance you get the one naturally from the leg attack and then one for rolling the crit nice man you did not like my tank i only shot four machine guns at him and i made him a mobile, apparently. That's all it takes. <laughs> this is the problem with tanks. They can get immobilized pretty easily. Yeah, now if you look down, uh, you hit with six missiles on that LRM, uh, on that SRM from your elementals on my Dragonfly. So that is no joke. That's a lot of missiles coming out from a, a fairly inexpensive unit. Yep. Granted, you can only do this twice per game. But it can add a lot of extra punch if you can get into a rear arc or get into another unit that's already been opened up by something else. That one single battle armor through being able to land the SRMs, being able to land the small laser, and land the auto rifle had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven separate opportunities to find a crit. That's again pretty powerful right there. I got unlucky, none of them landed, but 
those opportunities were still there. Yeah, you're still fishing. All right, let's see what's going on on the gargoyle. Missing, hitting, trying to find if a trooper will actually die. Not yet. Um, that's why I'm shooting at you. We need to kill some of these troopers. <laughs> All right, carrying on. Okay, physical attacks. Oh, there we go. Killed a trooper. So since he's in my hex, I can kick him because it's technically melee range. You can both kick inside the hex or you could have kicked to the battle armor that was the one hex away. So you had an option to kick either one of my battle armors because I had one in the hex with you and one next to you. Yeah, I think that battle armor was actually in my side arc, so I wouldn't have been able to kick. But if I had turned and it was in my front arc, yeah, I could have kicked either battle armor. Good point. Since now this set of battle armor is down a man, it's going to be harder to swarm with them in general, and it's going to do less damage because so, it's missing a fifth of its weaponry. Yep. If you don't mind keeping the Viper there, I am going to demonstrate swarm, and that way we can yeah. see the modifier there. Okay. So, so I'll keep my Viper there, you keep your Dasher there, and and don't drop the battle armor, and we can that give works. a little example of both. Exactly. So here's the laser, which is, is that the guy here? I think that's the guy. No, that's the flamer. Let me find the. All right. So the flamer's here. He's got light damage because we go to the armor. We can see right here, this trooper's killed. These two troopers have lost a little bit of armor. The other two troopers are doing fine. So he's just going to go done. Yeah. I'm going to leave my elementals in the same hex as the vehicle, and I'm going to try and swarm the vehicle. Ooh, nice. All right. So my laser elemental. So yours is the flamer that's in there. Right here, again, to me, mount should mean I can climb onto things, but that's not the option. It's the load option, but again, that's not available. What I have to go is click on the immobile Epoma. Epona would have the option to load, I think, but I think the fact that I'm immobile is why I can't do it. I don't know why I can't do it. I'm gonna have to figure that out. But that's what I would have been able to do, is I would have been able to... Ah, there's the load button, but it's also grayed out. I would have been able to now pick the battle armor up and move it to a different part if I wanted to. I can't, so I'm just going to sit there and hit done because I'm immobile. I'm really not happy with just these salamanders, so I'm just going all out. i move this battle armor in. i move my machine guns in. Oh, no. Full pile up. All right, Dasher could unload if it wanted to but again we want to demonstrate how the battle armor hopefully will soak up some damage it's a dasher so there's probably a greater likelihood the dasher is gonna get blown up without any of the battle armor being touched yeah i think the battle armor have more armor than the actual dasher does so this is the guy right in the middle i want to go for his salamander gonna shoot him up with the srm a small laser so the damage is by trooper it's at half that's why when it was four hit it was only two damage but it gets that nice infantry range so we're gonna go ahead and hit done the gargoyle doesn't have a clan er ppc does it i can look for myself so the what was that the clan er ppc does what so the reason i was asking if the clan if a gargoyle mounted a clan er ppc the one thing i wanted to demonstrate is that battle armor will only take damage to an individual battle armor it won't spread so if you had a clan er ppc or gauss rifle and you hit battle armor the 15 damage only goes to one individual trooper kills said trooper but none of that spills over to the other four troopers yeah so if you hit a trooper that had one health left with an ac20 uh 19 of that damage is going away because that poor little guy ate the bullet for his squad and again so the machine gun here it's just my gunnery skill plus the targets modifier so the fact that he jumped is plus one none of my movement i jumped comes into play and then again i get that nice infantry range for having the auto rifle for point blank now this guy is down to four killed but got four troopers left we've got the dragonfly what we're going to do is we are going to try and swarm swarm four still a plus two because of four troopers active same thing if i went to the leg attack four or five has the same modifier if he kills another guy next turn the modifier will drop down there'll be a more difficult modifier if i was smart i'd have that clan invasion box set rule set right there and i could read off exactly what the modifier is 
Yeah, it's that's one thing. Mega Mech doesn't tell you uh, until you get to that point. You can't look up a chart or anything in Mega Mech, which is perfectly fine. They're doing the right thing. They are encouraging you to go out and acquire for yourself all the rules, which I've done. I just didn't pull them out. And my Poma is going to die a fiery death without doing anything. All right, we got some good stuff going on. So my laser somehow misses on a four, but my small laser hits two of the troopers of the five hit. Now, Salamander takes three damage. The trooper is now down to zero armor remaining. Now they have one quote unquote internal structure pip, i.e. the body itself of the trooper. So that I have not eliminated that battle armor. I've just taken away all of its armor. If I do one more damage, then that trooper will die. Yeah, he's in a convertible battle armor suit now. Like that picture off the one rule book where the uh, battle armor is peeled all off the guy's face. Yeah, exactly. All right, spread some more stuff out. My battle armor flamers have successfully swarmed the opponent, so we'll get into that next round, see what kind of damage we can cause. Here we go. Trooper 3 gets the auto rifle, two damage, trooper killed. So that it's not when zero armor is remaining, it's when trooper is killed that it's noted. Yeah, so I'm going to be down to three troopers in that uh, Salamander squad. So mm -hmm. If I had a second mech, I would put it there so we could show those modifiers. So speaking of which, I successfully swarmed Jesty's Viper. And today we're just going to yep. talk about the battle armor. We're not going to go through in depth how Jesty might deal with getting rid of me. He's just going to sit there and take the swarming so that, I mean, he can move, but... We'll show you then what the swarm attack looks like next round. You went to town on my dasher. Perfect. All right, so two damage to the left torso. The passenger gets in the way, so therefore the elemental takes two damage, and there's seven armor remaining. So the battle armor took two damage, and there's still more armor remaining than on the dasher, which only has four for that location. Oh, yeah, that's... You're basically tripling the armor on your dasher if you put a set of elementals on there. And right here, it saved it from going internal because I took two damage to the right torso. And because the elemental got in the way, I still have one armor remaining. Had that trooper not been there, I'd be internal and rolling for crits. But of course, that does happen right here. The passenger avoids the damage on the right torso. Now there's only two internal structure. Saved me for one part. Not too much. Anything else in the damage screen we want to talk about? Uh, not that's that important, uh, regarding elementals anyway. Alright. Are you kicking me when I'm down? Yeah, I'm trying to kill those, uh, battle armor. <laughs> and I'm also gonna try and punch you. Uh, since you were up on level one, I could punch you in an attempt, Goodness. which I did specifically. Yeah, I did miss. Now the long tom comes into play. Well, What long tom? Oh, I didn't tell you? I put a long tom off the map. It just took a couple turns to get laid in. Oh, shit. Okay, so it's artillery. Number one, it's going to take some time to travel. So there's going to be one turn. I'm going to have to guess where some elementals might end up being. Well, they Number can only jump for three hexes, and your big old pie plate of a long tom shot is three hexes big. So, uh, One thing, I have a seven to hit, and that's to hit the hex. I can't target an actual unit because I have zero gunnery skill so I jacked my gunnery all the way up and I still have a plus seven indirect artillery modifier so artillery is very hard to be accurate with we're gonna go ahead and just I'm gonna pick a hex that there's no way that Jesty will ever go to that hex so it definitely won't hit there then long tom will oh. land in one turn now as everybody looking at my screen can clearly see there's a little indicator now of where that artillery is going to come, so I know to not have any of my units go into that hex, because I would not want to have the artillery hit myself. That would be horrible. So my dasher is in a lot of trouble, so I'm definitely getting that. I was going to unload. That would be the good thing. I'm going to show you what happens when the dasher destroys with the elemental still loaded so the cheetah is going to get a free shot to blow up the dasher let me figure out what i want to do with my flamer battle armor where's my flamer battle armor right here i have no option because i'm mounted on the viper so until i dismount stop swarming i don't get to actually choose but i do still get to sync initiative one thing we didn't mention the once the battle armor is mounted they don't get their own movement phase so they don't get to sync initiative so 
the dasher with the battle armor there, that battle armor has not been an initiative option. Yeah, that just gets skipped over for moving in gunnery phases. Jesty, haha, went right to where the artillery is with his salamander, so I'm going to make sure I stay here out of the blast radius and don't get hit by that artillery that's coming in on hex 1206. I mean, a different hex, not 1206. I definitely didn't shoot oh, the artillery crap. at 1206. Fortunately, Jesty has a turn to uh, jump out. All right, who am I got right here? The MG, that's right here. I'm gonna go after his Man of War. I love the Man of War when it's mine. I don't like it when I'm facing it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, oh, let me put my you... kobolds in the hex because my other elementals are swarmed ah. or swarming your opponents. So I guess that counts as uh, being, you know, carried or whatever. Interesting. I did not know that. I don't know if it's supposed to work like that. So this may be a bug or not necessarily a bug, but uh, you know what I mean? Yep. That's one reason I do these videos, because I know like a third of the rules, and doing these videos helps me learn another third of the rules. So then I can be twice as smart as I was before, and still only 67% as smart as others. So one thing to note, uh, I'm trying to shoot the battle armor that are currently swarming my Viper, and it will not let me, because uh, you cannot shoot at your own unit. You can try and punch them though, right? Um, I think I could do that with the Viper, which is what I'm going to try next th th this turn i should say oh i got you you were saying with like the salamander you were trying to shoot it, it's just straight up said nope target is swarming a unit impossible same when i target your kobolds it shouldn't be the kobolds it should be the uh elementals yeah sorry the elementals i can target yeah. the kobolds which get a plus one because the target is a vtol and a plus three because you have stealth <laughs> Jeez. improved stealth thank you very much Never mind, we're not going to turn their battle that armor. Guy. Another yeah. plus one to shoot at them. We'll shoot at oh, the gargoyle. No, no. It's battle armor on battle armor action, so the, that plus one doesn't apply. <laughs> you and your stealth. Only reason that you didn't lose every single unit when we fought stupid commander at stealth in addition to ridiculous jump. No, my commander didn't have stealth. He didn't? Which guy had stealth? No, none of them did. It was clan invasion uh, list. No twilight heat when i faced you yeah no none of my units had still oh huh. i was just jumping around like a madman with that huntsman so now i'm with my battle armor laser and oh because i didn't hit done this is the thing i always mess up with battle armor i shoot all the weapons and figure therefore mega mech will automatically do it and then it moves it to the swarm and i forget that i have to hit done okay so i can't do it right now in the firing phase i think i'm gonna have to do it in the melee phase to try and dust you off of my little viper there. Yes. So I'm gonna try and shoot those elementals with my lasers in my left arm and see if it'll still let me try and brush you off with my right arm. And if not, then we know you can't shoot and try and brush yourself off of elementals. Don't worry, we'll have a separate video where we go through how to fight against elementals. This one is to fight as elementals. I'm now to my swarmed unit. Missiles can't be used in a swarm attack. Flamer can't be used in a swarm attack. Auto rifle can't be used in a swarm attack. I've already swarmed. So now I have the attacking the swarm and it is an automatic hit. So I'm gonna fire that. Love me some automatic hit. Everybody's still alive, even though my armor is way down. So I- For now. For now, I am going to leg attack this gargoyle, since a kobold is a plus 100 to hit. <laughs> My turn to fire, oh yeah. I'm letting the dasher die. I'm letting your cheetah live to do it, just in case he you know, needs the physical phase to really end the dasher. I hope not. Me too, but you never know with your luck. Very true. So you attacked the swarm mech at the pursuit tank. Automatic hit. Using swarm table, you do 10 damage. Ouch. Yeah, so the way a swarm attack works is that you roll for location as normal, and since I he's a mobile, I can specifically target a location, which I did with uh, going for his turret. You can do you do the full damage of all your weapons to one location. So the flamers do two damage, so it's a total of ten damage with your primary weapon. That is, uh, so my flamers do a total of ten damage to one location because they do two each, and all five automatically hit the same location. Nice. Plus you got and a critical. I'm, 
Yeah, I think that was an actual natural critical. I don't think that's a feature of the swarm. Got it, because it says take damage to turret critical. Meanwhile, your laser shot both of my troopers, killed both of them. Take that. However, I got to do my swarm attack on you. It's an automatic hit. I've got your right oh. arm, which was... Maybe, maybe there is an automatic critical involved in the swarm, because I got one and you got one. I don't think the odds are that that would happen normally. Yeah. Unless we both happen to roll box cars. Maybe the automatic crit is a feature of the swarm, which means, hey, that swarm's even more powerful than I thought. <laughs> I also got internal structure, so that might be part of one of mine. I got two different Well, there's two critical hit rolls. Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, I got zero effect both times. Now, now, if I'm not mistaken, these elemental flamers are down a trooper, so you only did eight damage total. Correct. All right, let's see what happens blew off a, a torso yet somehow the <laughs> elemental sitting on the torso <laughs> dodged it <laughs> i'm not sure how that works but the poor little guy went flying somewhere in that hex okay so the the dasher is destroyed as you can see further down and then and... the elemental was trapped in the wreckage so took damage each elemental took damage i wonder if there are any elementals that are left we'll see yeah, that's weird. I've, you know, I've never actually destroyed a mech uh, while there was still battle armor attached to him. And it, I don't think it's automatic what happened. I think there was a roll to see if I would be trapped in the wreckage. I could be wrong. Yeah, I think there's a chance that they can just get out and are sitting in that hex. Yep. In the meantime, your gargoyle went to town. And so after the last trooper gets killed, then you get the post, hey, your entire unit is destroyed by damage because that was the last trooper remaining. So therefore now I'm out of troopers, therefore all done. Okay, so now in the physical phase, it will let me try and brush off. It'll let me try and brush off the elementals. But unfortunately, I think since I fired, the brush off thing is grayed out. It's still saying I can declare a physical attack, but every single physical attack is grayed out, which means in reality, I can't. Yep, so you need to have both arms not having shot because you only shot Correct. one arm okay i was really hoping you could punch yourself in the face because i would love well, we'll, yeah we'll do that next turn okay <laughs> my mm. elemental's so, still gonna be alive next turn no they should be i can't shoot at them <laughs> if the viper is still alive next turn so one thing to note i'm on the mana war now and it's telling me i can melee it says it's my turn to, to declare physical attacks but the only unit that i can attack and i think there's only wait is there more than one of your units here no i do have a battle armor in that cell the ah, one that you okay, killed was the one that was attacking. sitting on the hill okay well we'll go ahead and try and kick them then never mind ah, i thought it was wigging out on me <laughs> if i'm not mistaken those elementals that were attached to the dasher are just gone does appear that way elemental right now mounted on you huh it's saying i can move did you get me huh. off by shooting me Maybe that's why you couldn't brush me. No, you're still swarmed, so... Or it still says I'm swarmed on huh. the status. All right, I'm not going to do anything. Because it's telling me I could walk or jump. Don't understand. No, just hit done. Yep. I'm going to walk my salamanders away from the explosion and turn their back to it. It's going to land in 1206. All right, I'm going to jump my viper. I don't know if there's a roll that you need to make to stay attached. I think it happens automatically. Yeah, and it looks like he made it. We'll, we'll check during the movement phase. The roll happens in the background. Yep. Oh yeah, there we go. So by jumping, that's quote unquote, you trying to dislodge this swarming infantry. You needed an eight to succeed. You got a two, so I stay swarming on you. Yeah, so jumping your mech is uh, one way to get rid of infantry. Oh, okay. There goes the long tom. So, I fired the long tom. This isn't an artillery lesson, but just note. So, I needed a 7, and I rolled a 6, so that means I miss. And that means it scatters one heck, so it goes over to 1303. Now, my elementals, I made sure were close enough, because the long tom, with the pie plate, I'm taking 15 damage. I take that to every single trooper. Artillery Ouch. is a great way to get rid of battle armor. Just yeah, it's is a little bit further away so he only takes five damage to every single trooper so therefore his battle armor survives but takes a lot of damage yeah they're all down to basically half health which is not good no 
so I'm still swarming Jesty. If I wanted to right now, I could try and get off the swarm, but I don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure. So remember, I use next target to pull up that it's the dragonfly. It doesn't happen necessarily automatically. Go ahead and fire, done. And this will also be the last turn. This will cover everything I wanted to cover. Less the indirect, but we'll do a we'll splice in something. So I'm Ooh, attacking ouch. him with the swarm. It's an automatic hit. Again, I got the double critical. This time I got two locations. I actually got the hit. And he attacked the Epoma. Epona. I can't pronounce that, I don't know why. And destroyed that. Alright, so the last thing we want is Jesty to try and swipe off his battle armor so my battle armor swarmed on his viper he's going to try a physical attack to brush them off oh you know what i don't think i can oh because i just took I... the arm off didn't i no i think you need to have actual wound actuators oh is that what it is and you don't yeah no i've only got a lower arm actuator so without a hand actuator no it says hand right there huh shoulder upper arm lower arm hand never mind then uh, maybe it's because I have that crit on my lower arm actuator. It won't let me brush off. Oh, wait, never mind. There we go. So it will let me brush off. I just have to select the elementals as my target. Ah, uh, yeah, that can be always difficult. Uh, so he missed. So then he punches himself in the right arm. Good job. Yeah, All right. I went to brush off with my left arm and I hit myself in the right arm. <laughs> so brushing off elementals is uh, difficult, as you can see from that roll there. Well, at this point, I am willing to admit defeat, and then I need to hit it again. Jesse, anything else that uh, besides indirect we wanted to cover? No, I think that's most of it. Uh, indirect is kind of important, though, so I'll yep. be adding in some LRMs. And we're going to take a break because it's my lunchtime, so we'll be back in a little bit to finish that off. Okay, welcome back from our very short delay. It took all of two seconds for us to load up a brand new game. So now Justy and I are getting ready to deploy. We each have some battle armor so we can do some spotting and some LRM boats so we can do some indirect LRM fire and a really massive target so we can have something to shoot at. Justy, feel free to say hi again. Hi again, everybody. All right, so I'm gonna hide behind some hills with my heavy LRM carrier. Again, hide on the other side with my other LRM carrier. All right, it's a nice cobalt battle armor. I'm going to deploy them right wide out in the open, because why not? Yeah, they're already extremely difficult to hit anyways. And then my nice super heavy Ravager battle armor. And then my target for Jesty to shoot at. All right. To show movement penalty, I'm going to turn the alarm carrier. This one I won't move. Just moving my Viking up to level 2 so you can see him. Going to jump 6 with my Kobold battle armor. Do I have to do something? It's, technically it's not a jump, they just fly. Okay. Uh, I can't go in the woods, that's right. You can go over the woods though. Why is it not letting me jump? Oh, do I have to go up? Uh, just click where you want to go and it'll automatically like load in the uh, movement. It doesn't show you your VTOL movement uh, for some reason. It's not letting me do any movement. Really? Just like select them and then click in like 11 10 or something and see if it'll let you or if it'll populate. Yeah, it's not. I wonder what huh, I'm doing that's wrong. weird. Try clicking go up, I guess. I don't know. Did go up. Oh, because I'm doing jump and it's not actually jump. Uh, yeah, therein lies the problem. The kobolds do not jump, they fly. <laughs> I love that I just spent like three minutes of YouTube time messing up. <laughs> That's okay, you can just dump them later. No, not a big deal. All right, so here I am with a kobold with a tag. So let's go ahead and try and tag the Viking. Mm, not the Viking. We're going to try and tag the Kobold. I'm going to tag the Kobold with the Kobold. Cannot target infantry with tag. Okay, never mind. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> mm, solid nine on the uh, Viking. Yeah, he walked for all of zero hexes. Some uh, intervening woods. 
So I will fire the tag. And if you noticed, uh, you can hit multiple times, which doesn't really have an effect. You don't get a roll multiple times. It's still just one roll. <laughs> just rolls on the cluster table. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I don't know if it's an artifact of or something inherent to battle armor. All right, so once again, everything's X'd out. I'm going to switch over to indirect, but I don't have anything spotted yet. So I'm going to switch which unit comes first. And with the kobold... All right, so first I'm going to spot the other kobold. Yes, done. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to spot. Yeah, so since my kobolds uh, tag the Turkina, they cannot spot, just like a regular mech or other unit. But I can still fire. I like how I missed, so therefore I can still spot. Yeah, so even if you do miss the tag, uh, which isn't that really big of a deal, realistically, because you can spot, and I don't know if you get a spotting penalty. No, no penalty. Yeah, then you're then you're golden. Mm -hmm. Okay, so unfortunately, because the Trakina is elevated, I cannot indirect you with my archer because he has line of sight to you. But my LRM carriers that are behind level one can indirect your Trakina. So I'm now going to spot the Viking with my other battle armor. I like that spotting has no range. No, I don't think it does. It's line of sight, period. And last but not least, going to use the Turkina, and we're going to spot the Firemoth. No, we're going to spot the Elementals because they have no pe they have no uh, movement. Then I'm going to shoot up the Archer because I don't like the Archer. All right, we got to redo that. Select the Elementals. Spot. Yes. Then target completely wrong. Elementals. Spot. Yes. Next target. Archer, cluster, fire, cluster. Should be shooting my PPCs first, but whatever. Oh, I have LRMs too. What doesn't the turkey have? Okay, so now here we go. Let's twist over. So I've spotted three different things. I've got the elementals spotted by the turkina. So I've got my regular gunnery skill at four. My vehicle itself moved so I have a plus one I'm targeting battle armor so there's a plus one I'm in medium range so there's a plus two my target is in light woods so there's a plus one I'm shooting indirect so there's a plus one my spotter jumped so there's a plus three and my spotter is making an attack this turn so there's a plus four another plus one so there's a plus four from the spotter itself if I go and target the other kobolds however you're supposed to pronounce them, and I keep messing up. Now I'm looking no, at cool. the Kobold being spotted by the Kobold. I start off with my gunnery, four. Again, my LRM moved, so that's a plus one. The target itself moved enough for a plus two. The target is a VTOL, so it gets plus one. It is battle armor, so it gets another plus one. I'm in medium range, so it gets plus two. It has BA improved stealth, another plus two and it's indirect fire plus one but you know there's there's no modifier here for the fact that my unit that is doing the spotting moved and had my unit fired i don't know if there would have been a modifier so i'll need to check that next turn but now I'm no, gonna go... there shouldn't be so we can definitely test that out uh next round yep and last but not least is the viking now the viking was again spotted by my ravager so i've got gunnery four I moved plus one, sitting in medium range plus two, and indirect plus one. So I have an eight to hit that Viking, all because it was spotted by the Ravager. Had the, oh, Ravager, and the Ravager moved. Yep. So there you go. Ravager moved, no modifier there. So that's sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and light up the Viking. Okay, now with my other LRM carrier, I wish I could twist, but I can't. So I don't get to shoot anything because I forgot I don't have it in a turret next turn. And yeah, and my LRM carriers are four skill, plus one target moved, plus one target jumped, plus two medium range, plus one intervening light woods, plus one target in light woods, and plus one indirect. To go at the Turkina? Yeah, so I'm at 11s. The LRM fire really came from the heavy LRM carrier. So I had eight, got eight, landed with nice 12 missiles, but because Jesty cheats, he took hardened armor, so therefore he only takes six damage. Hey, that's not true. I take all of the damage. I just take it in half pips. Cheater says what? What? Oh, god damn it. Ah, <laughs> oh, the Turkina can't kick the 
battle armor. Why can't it kick the battle armor? But because it... the battle armor is in level one and you're on level two. Oh. So remember, battle armor is only one high, so it's as though the mech were prone. I, I thought you were level two because everything else around the Turkina is level two. I missed that that was a uh, one difference. No, I, I dumped them off there specifically so you couldn't see my battle armor. Once again, Jesty cheats. Okay, so we're going to kind of skip ahead what just happened. So don't worry, we just repositioned ourselves, but you've seen us do that enough times you don't need to worry about it. So here I am going to tag Jesty. Nice three. Hopefully I hit with that. No. And yes, nailed him. Awesome. Okay. Oh, that was me. Oh, I did not hit you. Did I not Did you not fire your tag? Uh, I must have forgotten to hit fire. Dope. Good job for me. Okay, so I don't have him spotted. Next unit. All right. Ooh, there's a dasher right behind me. About to lose. Just for spotting purposes. <laughs> Gonna spot the Viking, and I'm going to shoot. It's a machine gun, and I'm done. So now I'm going to twist, and... All right. Gunnery skill, medium range, indirect fire, and spotter is making an attack. I've got eight. Let's go ahead and roll those dice. Oh, wait a minute. Did you say spotter is making an attack? Yes, because the kobold also kobold spotted and made an attack. So infantry does include that penalty. Okay, so that's... I was not expecting that. I thought they didn't get a firing penalty. But you do ignore their movement penalty, which is great. Yep, and... I have tag on that, so had I actually used my tag, I'd be golden. Yeah, the kobolds are like the perfect spotter unit. Even if you miss the tag, you can still spot and then shoot your machine gun anyway. Am I going to have anybody left to shoot after this turn? You All right. should. I'm not really shooting anything. Or I'm only shooting minimal stuff. You shouldn't have SRMs. So if I wanted to try and shoot the archer, I couldn't because I have four gunnery. I pivoted, so I walked. Yeah, the target moved. I'm in long range, the target's in light woods, it's indirect, and the spotter is making an attack. But if I jump down instead to the Viking, I remove most of those penalties. Again, the spotter did move, and that's not a penalty for me, but the spotter is making an attack, so that's a plus one. Just to show how cheap the uh, Viking is, I'm going to alpha strike a Turkina at it, and I'll be lucky if I scratch <laughs> some paint. Yeah, so as you can see here, I've got eights on the Turkina, and I've got tens on the LRM carrier because the dasher ran so we have to take into account his penalty for running even though it's the same medium range bracket for both units <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and shoot at the Turkina <laughs> I like how you say as you can see as if we're recording your screen well you will be able to see oh you are recording no <laughs> oh <laughs> I forgot. we'll see the numbers pop up I see what you're saying okay yeah yeah uh, I'm laying into the Viking and uh, a little bit of paint has come off Oh, Aiming look at that. Head. Critical effect, no effect because of that minus two to crits. Meanwhile, my LRM carrier is just getting shredded and is already immobile. Jesty didn't really fire anything other than hitting with six SRM twos. Yeah, oh. and that's one of the penalties or downsides of bringing vehicles. They can be immobilized fairly easily. <laughs> I've got a uh, plus two to driving skills and a minus one MP off a micro pulse laser. Take that. Ooh, I managed to head hit. Ooh, that's the second one. Oh, and you have a plus one to your uh, piling ski ro skill roll. See, there is a drawback to hardened armor. Yeah, needs a seven, rolls ten, made it. But, I mean, I think that got everything. Is there anything else that you needed to do? I just wanted to show the tag and the weapon fire with the cobalt. So if you'll keep the Viking still i'll manage oh, to actually shoot yeah don't forget to press fire we'll wow, edit that out through my turn yeah I'm good with that. <laughs> all right so i've got the viking lined up i've got tag i hit fire all right and this time i hit right yep sam yep. light tagged tagged you twice Ooh, double tap all right so twisting around all right so i'm going to start off with the cobalt select and he's also going to shoot the machine gun fire done Twist the alarm carrier. So, I've got a four gunnery skill. I'm shooting indirect, so I'm plus one, and I'm in medium range plus two. My tagger, no modifiers, because it's infantry. Even if I had moved it, it would have no modifiers, as we showed before, because it's tagging, even though it's shooting. Again, no modifier. So, I'll go ahead and fire. Done. And that's really all I need to demonstrate, so I'm just going to skip the rest of my shooting phases so we can get to the damage so you can see it landing 
Jesty's only a little bit competitive, so he's trying still to blow me up. Even though the game doesn't count, he still wants to win. Oh, I just wanted to see how much damage those little marauders could take. <laughs> All right, so there's me shooting with the machine gun. Four troopers hit. Four times he takes half a point of damage. Uh, Kobold shooting back at me. Ah, uh, yeah, so there's the Ravager. Takes a medium laser and doesn't even notice it. Yeah, they're not even down to half armor. Of course, I miss because I needed a seven, but still, seven's a good number, even with the miss. And so that is how indirect with battle armor is done and why the Kobold is the best there is. Now I just need Jesty yeah, to... Kobold, Sylphs. That one. Uh, accept victory and we'll be all done. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us. Please add in any comments below to let us know what you'd like to see us do next time. Anything you want to say as goodbye, Jesty? Uh, not much other than battle armor are your best spotting units out there. Unless you have a mech that's literally just a tank uh, with no weapons or minimal weapons. You're still going to take the mech's movement modifier into account when you're spotting. So it'll help reduce those numbers by one to two, which is a big difference in the long run. Over an entire game, having battle armor floating around a spot, jumping around, keeping their TMM up, being nuisances. That's what they're best at. They're yep. not a frontline unit to soak up damage unless they're the marauders or ravagers apparently <laughs> but uh you you want to kind of be cagey with them keeping them moving keep their tmm up and keep them in position to hit with their shorter ranged weapons exactly all right thank you jesty and thanks everybody for watching really appreciate it have a good one Bye bye